We good? We're good. So when was the last time you were in a bus like this, Sax? Uh, I haven't been in one that moved since I was in Ottawa in uh, uh, hmm, 1977. <coughs> So that means so that, that was a year that was a year after this was made. Yeah, perfect. You found Oakville okay? I did. It, it's still where it was the last time I was here. Yeah. Um, but I have to admit, your store has been re-merchandised and it's so full of fun stuff. I want to spend some time in there when when we're done. Interesting exercise being a retailer. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if we can really call ourselves a retailer, but. Uh, you sell things. It's more than a laboratory. You sell things. But you started in retail. I did. You've got history with Babe Lore. I did. I started before then. Um, it was uh, uh, part-time when I was at Carleton University. Um, I was doing, still doing custom installations in Montreal for my clients there. At age 16, I managed to skip a couple of years. So at age 16, I went to Ottawa and went to Carleton. You, uh, when you met Dr. Floyd Tool? Yes, or? yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he certainly had a profound effect on the way I thought. I mean, I was already fascinated by transducers because, you know, a loudspeaker is, it, it fascinated me that you've got different, you're, you're transforming one form of energy into another and then doing it again. In other words, you're, you're taking an electrical signal, turning it into a mechanical uh, motion and then turning the mechanical motion into acoustic energy. So there are those two transitions that are happening in yeah. a transducer that, that are so utterly fascinating because so many things can go wrong. And you're process. a young kid. It's such a beautiful day. Why don't we go and uh, sit outside while we, while we still can? Sounds good to me. It's fabulous weather. No kidding. Sax, welcome to Oakville. Thanks for making the trip out. Hey, well, you know, this is better than any fireside chat. This is a <laughs> lakeside chat. I trust you to have us right by the water where I'm totally happy. I would have loved to have dragged the crew up to Prince Edward County and <laughs> instead of sitting in a beautiful park on a gorgeous day, we could be sitting in a, a wine cellar. <laughs> Wine's been a passion. Yeah. A you know, funny place to start our chat, but sure. wine has been a passion for a very long time. Yeah, can't give my parents any credit for that. They had the worst swill imaginable on the table uh, when I was growing up. Black Tower? A Black Tower, you know, Leap from Milch. Well, they were cocktail people. They were that generation. So I didn't think I liked wine. And then I went on a school trip and ended up in Paris. Um, managed to convince my parents to let me stay two weeks after the rest of the school group went back yeah. on my own dime because I'd made some money selling audio. Yeah. Uh, How old are you? 14. 14 so years 14. old. So 14, you've been to Paris. Uh, would you say that that's the year you, 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 you call as the starting point for your career in consumer tech? The starting point was I was the kid that bought all the magazines at mm -hmm. age 11 or 12. I just loved music, and um, and I didn't like it, you know, sounding not musical. So you've seen many decades in this uh, in this business of ours. Is there a, is there a, a a time where the industry was the most fun? It was, in a sense, like the conversation we had in the in the Volkswagen bus coming down here. It's a bit analogous to my just going to British car day um, and looking at 1100 British cars and looking under the hood yeah. these are vintage sports cars and going well I could work on that I could set valve yeah. top of clearances no problem I could tune the carbs no problem now you, you don't look in the back of an amplifier and go wow look at that you know toroids uh, that's really interesting it's it's more abstract now and it's more software it's, it's about the software what about just the, the the, the competitiveness of the industry, the number of brands that are in, dis, in the mm -hmm. industry, the knowledge base of the consumer based on easy access to information through online, social media. Uh, it's so different than the 80s. It used to drive me crazy. I used to do these consumer seminars, um, originally started by Lauren Howell, yeah. How to Buy a Loudspeaker. And then he taught me some, some great ways of doing it and we, we built on that and started charging for tickets and 
And there, our objective was to span the gap that you're referring to, the gap between the amount of knowledge needed to make an intelligent buying decision and the amount of knowledge the average consumer actually had. If you look at it from the consumer standpoint, having the internet and having access to all that information has now bridged that gap. But it's interesting to me that what it has done is not so much bridge the gap as it has dumbed it down to people forgetting, forgetting to listen. They're, they're buying hi-fi components without having listened, listened to them. They're doing it, it on reviews. If, if right? it gets five stars, yeah. then I don't have to listen to it, which yeah. is, for me, very shocking. Right. Do you, uh, do you buy things online? Yes, I do. Yeah, what was the last thing you bought? Uh, I bought a pair of shoes. Shoes? Online. Yeah. Yeah, and did, they, did you keep them? I'm wearing them. All right, <laughs> <laughs> they're beautiful. <laughs> they fit. Uh, I know, it's quite funny you caught me on that one. Uh, but there again, it's so damn convenient. Yeah. Um, so it's a, nature, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, I think you, you have more access to information now, but uh, which is a good thing, but I think the information is just so simplified um, that people have forgotten to use their ears. We're, we're, we're living in an uh, always-on environment, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got, we've got the, <laughs> these, these things on us all the time. Yeah. Has that made, has that made business easier? It, it's made it easier, but it has made it more stressful. Yeah. Uh, because those boundaries are now gone. Uh, there are no boundaries. I think overall, it's. I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm happy with the evolution of information, um, access to information. Uh, I just think that we ha we weren't taught in school how to cope with it, and and maybe we should re take a look at that and put it on the curriculum. I, I was in Ottawa on Monday, and I sat through uh, um, an M MPD seminar. They disclosed that. Consumer Electronics has had uh, six months consecutively of negative growth. I remember 1982. Okay. 1981, 82. That was what tough. was worse, 82 or 2008? Was it mm -hmm. seven or eight? Well, that's a tough question because I had You've a run horrible them year. Both. 2008 was a horrible year for evolution. Um, but um, I, I'd have to say that 81, 82 was just too crazy. I mean, interest rates being what they were. Uh, 14, 15? Oh yeah, just up, up, up. higher, eight, almost 18. And yeah. So really it was um, difficult to feel that you had control over your life when, when those things got away from you. Um, so I, I, I'm still pretty grateful for the way we can live today. Yeah. Uh, sorry to sound so optimistic, but I really do prefer it now. You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear a little optimism. <laughs> so you've, uh, for the for the first time in almost four decades, you're not uh, part of uh, the Evolution brand. Right. Has that, uh, has that been weird for you? It, it, that's Are the right word. The, the right word, the, the first day um, I woke up without the alarm clock uh, at the usual you know, 6.50, um, I was like, wait, yeah. I, there was that moment, that was weird. The good news is, and I think there's, there's a lesson in it for me, had I been able to revisit my life and, and jump back in or you know, go in the time machine, the lesson I've learned is that I should have taken more time to think um, when I was the hamster on the wheel. You know, when I, I think I had uh, too much of a focus on getting more things done. Yeah, okay. and, and not thinking creatively, not implementing creative ideas, you know, implementation. I have a lot of good ideas, but it's all about implementation, right? Execution. Execution. That's so, the it. so uh, I, I think if I were to revisit myself in, you know, uh, 40 years ago, I would be teaching myself that lesson now, and I'm quite sure that um, uh, I, I will have some backseat driving ideas to offer, uh, you know, the Sal Rina and, and the team at Evolution, um, and in the industry in general. Um, at retail level, you know, I've been spending quite a bit of time with uh, having lunches and stuff that I didn't have time to have before, right. and a whole lot of ideas come to the surface in yeah. that environment. And um, so, hopefully, I can. So give you're that. not you're not saying goodbye to this industry. No, I don't think you can. No, it's, I can't. It's in. It's just in your blood. It, it is. It is absolutely in my blood. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. I'm really glad you came out. Thank you, John. And, so am uh, I. Let's and, have a uh, glass of wine. Let's go for a glass of wine. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>